Welcome back to the StatCast course on creating a to-do app using Laravel. This is episode 7, and in this episode we're going to be focusing on removing our completed tasks. So thinking about it from my user's perspective, if I complete a task, I'd like to also eventually remove them, because once I no longer need to reference them, I'd like to just permanently get rid of them here. One way to do it is to actually delete the task. So how can I delete a task? Well, taking a look, first of all, from our previous episode, I noticed that we had our if statement here, checking whether a task was completed. I actually want to put it outside of the form. So first, let's do that. So if I just cut this, paste it on top of our form, and then I could just bring this down as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's make sure that that works. So if I, I'm trying to mark a task as completed, so there we go. Okay, great. So all my tasks have been marked as completed. But what if a task is already completed? I'd like to have a different button that says delete. Let's add in another directive of else. If a task is not completed, let's add this complete button. So we ha that's what we have currently. So what can we do on the inverse of that? So let's just copy what we have here currently and let's paste that in below. And let's just see what that looks like. So we have, our no we have another button now. But of course, we're not going to want a button to complete a task that's already completed. We are actually going to want to delete it or remove it. Actually, let's just say delete just to make our terminology more consistent here. So if I just say delete, right? So it says delete now on our button. Uh, I want to actually change the color of this. So instead of button light, let's do button. I think it's danger. OK, so now we can delete. but we need to change our method that we're actually going to be using. So we could say that we want to use the delete method. So let's see what happens. If I inspect this element as we did before, we'll see that we have a new hidden input called delete. And if I look at this element here, I can see that the method that we're using is patch. And on this method, we're going to be using delete. So now we need to create a route that's going to handle this delete request. Let's add another route back in our web routes. And let's say that we want to handle a delete. And we're going to handle a delete just like our patch method. We're going to handle a delete to a specific ID. And we're going to call the method of delete. So right at the bottom of our page here, right at the bottom of our controller, uh, let's delete some of these comments. So I'll return to the home page when a task is created, mark a task as completed, and so we have our tasks that are being completed and divided into tasks and that are completed in uncompleted sections. So now let's delete a task. But however, I want to get rid of that term permanently. And we'll come back to that in just a second. So the method that we're creating is called delete. And we're going to pass through an ID using the curly braces from the, the web routes, as we did in the previous video. So I want to actually retrieve the task first. ID, and then I want to get the first row that matches that. And I just want to actually say return, uh, delete this task. And then let's just say that we want to delete the task with the ID of ID. Let's just see what this looks like. So I'm retrieving this. Let's just see uh, if I try to actually visit this path though. I shouldn't be able to see anything. Okay, yeah, so we're not doing a GET request. We're actually performing a HTTP delete request. So as we can see, we are actually performing a delete request. Uh, this delete is working. So we want to say delete this task with the ID of one. And this is completing a task. These tasks are both now marked as completed. So I want to actually delete this. So how do I delete it? Let's first start by just taking a look at the Laravel documentation. and under eloquent documentation, we can see that all we have to do is just call the delete method on our model. So let's just try that and see what happens. So we're already um, retrieving our model. So we're, we're retrieving our data and we're gonna run delete. Now I just wanna redirect to the home page, and let's just see what happens. So we are retrieving our model. Now we're deleting it and then I wanna return a redirect to the home page as we've done previously on, on the store update methods. I want to do that as well on the delete method. 
So let's try running this. Let's refresh this. Let's run delete. Okay, perfect. We're being returned back to our home page and we're no longer seeing the data in our database. So if I run, if I refresh this, we're seeing that our rows are being successfully deleted. In some cases, you would actually like to see the rows in the database and see which tasks have been deleted. Um, one thing that we could do is we could actually use what is called a soft delete. So if we scroll a little bit further down in the documentation under deleting eloquent models, we can see that Laravel also allows us to do a soft delete on a model. And when a model is soft deleted, it's not actually being removed from the database. Instead, we're adding a deleted at attribute on the model and we're inserting that deleted at column into the database, that deleted at data. If a model's deleted at value is not null, the model is going to be soft deleted. And all we have to do to do that is add a new trait, as we can see here. We just need to add a new trait of soft deletes. I'll copy that in. And on our task model, I'll paste that in here. And then I'm going to use the soft deletes trait. And then I have to actually add this onto our uh, database. I need to add this deleted at column on our table. So I'll need to create a new migration. I'm going to use this schema builder to add the deleted at column that we'll need. So to add that new deleted at column, I could just create a new migration. And we're going to say add deleted at to task table. I can see that we have that new migration created successfully here. So on our task table, I want to add the soft deletes to our task table. And I'm going to drop that column when there is a rollback. So I'm going to do drop column deleted at. And let's try running that migration and let's see what happens. So I ran the migration and now I can take a look at our database structure. I can just refresh this content tab. So we added a new deleted at field to our database and that deleted at type is going to be a timestamp, another timestamp. So we have now four timestamps and we can see that it is allowed to be nullable. So this is a nullable value, meaning if a value of deleted at is null, that is going to be still visible and if a value of deleted at is not null, it is going to be considered deleted and will not be pulled into our normal uh, database request. So to show you how this actually works, let me actually create a couple tasks and let's take a look at what it would actually work like. So you can see that I have three tasks now that I've added for this video in particular, just to kind of show you the flow of like a real world task scenario. So I've already planned this video and I'm already shooting this to-do video. So I'll just mark this as completed. Let's just imagine that I no longer care about uh, paying attention to whether or not I've planned the video. Uh, without changing anything additional besides adding in the this, this soft deletes uh, trait and adding the deleted at column onto our database, uh, I have nothing else to do. It's going to actually delete the task from our database or it's going to mark it as deleted and it's no longer going to appear in results. So let me show you how that works. So I could just click on delete and let's refresh our database. So you can see it no longer appears on our homepage and I can refresh the page and we'll see that we only have two tasks. However, if I go into our database and refresh what we have, I can see that we have three tasks and these are the three that I had from earlier. These are the two that I marked completed and we'll see that we have one that has a not null value of deleted at, and this is the planned video task. We can see that we have our soft deletes now working successfully. So if we just take a look at the soft deletes, we can see that we can also get just the trashed models. We can get just uh, the only the trashed models, or we can also include the trashed models. Uh, it's very powerful and it's really easy to use and you could actually add this in very quickly into your existing controllers and your delete methods. And it's really nice to do for like maybe temporarily removing something before you permanently remove it. For instance, like a, imagine like a trash can on your computer where you can 
delete files that have been in your trash can for more than 30 days. You could do something like that with this on your app. So if you removed posts, let's say from your like a blog and you unpublish them and you put them in the trash, you can run a check every 30 days. And if something's been in there for more than 30 days, you can just delete them permanently. However, if you want to undelete them, this makes it easier to do that so that you can actually uh, like revert your changes. You can untrash them, you can republish them, or you can put them back into draft mode. It gives you that kind of flexibility. And there's a lot of this type of stuff throughout Laravel, and uh, we can't cover all of it in this course, but uh, be sure to check out the documentation. There, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here, and I really recommend just reading through it at least once before you... Uh, if you ever run into any issues or I also recommend just reading through it at least once before you ever really start up a big project so be sure to take a look alright guys I think that's gonna be it for this video uh, we can currently we can now delete a task and we can also uh, complete tasks and we can add tasks and this thing is really cool it's coming along however I think uh, one thing I'm not too happy about and that we could actually solve in our next video is if I add a task that is empty with no description we're seeing that we can have we cannot have a null description value so we're getting an error here uh, my question for this is going to be how do we solve this how can we get rid of this error um, how can we validate the data that the user is sending to us and we're going to handle this in this next video if you're enjoying the series so far be sure to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss out this is going to be the final uh, video for the series and we'll be able to get this much needed uh, functionality added into our app also uh, if you like this video if you like all the videos so far in this uh, series uh, give us a like and a comment down below and thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next finale video creating our to-do app in Laravel bye guys